Hi everyone. Are you following us on Instagram? I've been dropping daily wisdom <laughs> on Instagram stories. So we're at the dirty alchemy and just going in there every day and talking about a lot of what we're talking about today in this podcast episode. And I've recently found out <laughs> the vast array of face filters on Instagram stories. And is anyone else freaked out by face filters? <laughs> Uh, so some of them straight up change the shape of your nose and chin. It is all sorts of fun and amazingness and deep fucked us upness, especially for the humans that are growing up with this and even more intense, impossible beauty standards than what we had growing up, which I thought were pretty gnarly too. So that's a thing. <laughs> But in other news, we have been having so much fun working on the Alchemical Business Intensive gift boxes. I love giving gifts. It's like one of my favorite things, as long as I have the time and space to actually do it. But to, to pick out good gifts for people is such a joy. And we've been like picking everything out and getting things in and matching things. And they're going to be custom boxes with like beautiful branding. So it's so much fun <laughs> I can't wait for you to see them if also if you've been on Instagram stories you've been seeing us like getting some of the orders in for what's going in the boxes um it's just been so fun but are you ready for your business to take off to a truly mind-blowing level of hell yeah this is what I've dreamed of so today's topic is stepping into your role as visionary CEO which is obviously about identity, but also about the very real impact that getting out of the weeds and allowing your business to flourish without your micromanaging and clenched butthole of fear. <laughs> to give some context, the self-help market is expected to have at least a 15% growth over the next two years. So by 2022, it's predicted to be worth over $13.2 dollars. $13.2 billion. That's with a B, my friends. <laughs> so as magical business owners, life coaches, and leaders in the spirituality and occult space, that means there are monumental opportunities for us to bring our highest good to this world and change people's lives, generate lots of money, and have a huge impact. So most business owners, even spiritual and magical businesses, don't realize that if they're managing the day-to-day -day of their business, they're doing it wrong. So the Harvard Business Review did a study where they found that there are two kinds of CEOs, manager CEOs and visionary CEOs. The CEO managers spend most of their time managing projects, delegating, and working on the nitty-gritty details of their business. And then the CEO visionaries spend more time on the big picture, expanding the business and coming up with innovative ideas. They're creating the vision and inspiring those supporting her to make it happen. So guess whose teams were more productive? Not managers, visionaries. And who had bigger profits? Did you guess it? <laughs> Visionary CEOs. So I've actually seen this in action for countless entrepreneurs and online business owners over the years. So women who are afraid consciously or subconsciously to step into the full power of their role as CEO or as owner of the business, who spend half their time managing current projects instead of holding the energy of future versions of the business, who are so bogged down by the everyday tasks in their business that they aren't actively creating the big picture, if this sounds like you, as business owners, as women, we are not taught to let go of control, to trust, to lead through inspiration, to receive, but to become a visionary and to become a visionary CEO, you need to. So right now, you may be desperate to free up space in your week to channel your amazing ideas and deliver your highest work through your business. The problem is, 
if you're so caught up in managing or delegating the minutia of your business that you don't have time or mental energy to do the things that make your soul flutter or stir your loins, (laughs) this could be a huge barrier to the whole reason you put you started your business in the first place to begin with so you may be frustrated with feeling like you have no time for soul-based content or program creation but you're afraid to let go of micromanaging your business or you're freaked out about your big business goals because you don't want to work more hours than you already are and your revenue is mainly tied to the hours you put in or You could feel alone on your business journey because you haven't found a community of people who can understand where you're at as an entrepreneur, give you feedback, support you in your growth. And you can't obviously bring these problems to the people who work for you. On hard days, maybe you've even caught yourself wondering if maybe it's time to just give up on the whole entrepreneur thing and get a quote unquote real job working for someone else or just burn the whole damn thing down. So before you go on with feeding your business plan and articles of incorporation through the paper shredder, (laughs) let's look at the three phases of business that no one seems to be talking about. So these are the startup phase, the owner reliant business, and the owner independent business. Okay. The first phase is the startup phase, obviously. (laughs) This is when you're just getting your business started. There's a lot of excitement and hope and optimism and probably at the exact same time doubt and fear and you're freaked out because there's no proof of concept or proof that it's all going to work out. So this is the infancy stage of your business. So if you were like, you just birthed the child and this this baby is 100% dependent on you, right? It's <laughs> You just have to pour your energy into it, pour your time into it, pour your money into it to even keep it alive for a day. Now, moving on to the second phase, which is the owner-reliant business. So you can kind of think of this if we're continuing on with the metaphor. <laughs> this may be the teenager stage of your business or the codependent adult stage where they're still living in your bath, your basement. (laughs) So this is when your business is running, you're bringing in revenue, but everything is reliant on you. Maybe not everything. Maybe you have a team, but big decisions rely on you. Things rely on you. You have to show up on a day to day or week to week basis or else fires will start and issues will arise and just you won't hit deadlines or you won't finish projects because things are relying on you. So moving on, this third phase is the owner independent business. So this is your fully grown adult business (laughs) that you're in a love affair with, or maybe it's even your sugar daddy. paying you profits and a salary with you not not even needing to show up. This is a business that you own. So you own the shares, you own the revenue minus expenses, the profits, but it doesn't rely on you. It is independent of you. It is fully grown. It doesn't matter if you show up on a day-to-day basis or even a week-to-week basis. You could leave for a month and it wouldn't matter. Like you have the systems, the team, everything in place so that it's running without you. So most small businesses are in the second category, that owner-reliant business category. And in case you didn't know, small businesses are usually defined as organizations with fewer than 100 employees. (laughs) So I'm assuming everyone listening to this right now is in that small business category or like the, the other interpretation is under a million dollars in revenue, which you like, you could be in that boat or not. So maybe after hearing that you're saying, but I love my business. It's my life's work. It's my sole purpose. I don't want to sell it or stop working at it. Why would I care if it, of it being independent of me? Because 
this is my deep love. This work is my deep service to the world. So this is like a parent saying, why would I make my children into functional adults that are fully independent from me? I birthed them. I want them to be dependent on me so I can make them love me and I can make them show up for Sunday night dinner. (laughs) This is silly, right? So we want owner independent businesses because on a practical level, your priorities may change in life. You may want to focus on having and raising children separate from your business, not metaphorical brood children, but real children, or find out that you are super passionate about quilting and don't want to do anything but that for months, or travel the world, or focus on your health, or become a philanthropist. You know, your focus is changing. Whatever it is, building the systems in your business so you are not chained to it, is changed to you are not chained to it to function, there we go, is important. And you can plan for that from the beginning. So the other side of this is when you remove the requirement for you to show up in your business, you will then only show up from a place of overflow. When your business does not need you to make money and money is flowing into your life as profits from your business, you will then show up from inspiration, from service, from creative spark. You will show up from significantly a significantly more elevated space than when you're showing up because it needs you and you need to make money and you need more customers and it's all on you and your decisions. You can feel like the difference in that, right? The different energy. <laughs> It also frees up your brain and your life to actually have the capacity to channel your greatest ideas and programs and concepts. So this is so much more than being about just you. It's about your impact on the world and your business's impact on the world. Mm. So scaling your business to this place and aligning it with your sole purpose doesn't require you to do a bunch of shit you don't want to do, but it does require you to have systems in place so that you don't burn out and spend all of your time doing things you hate doing. You don't have this teenager or adult living in your basement just (laughs) needing you. It's dependent on you. And in case you missed it, We have opened the Alchemical Business Intensive up for application, and I could not be more excited to share it with you. So this is a 13-week program for spiritual entrepreneurs and magical business owners who want to step into the role of visionary CEO without the nonstop hustle and grind guaranteed to leave you burnt out and ready to burn your business down. So we will be aligning your business with your sole purpose, building the foundational systems you need to scale to seven figures or multiple six figures or to multiple seven figures, all while becoming part of a supportive community of spiritual entrepreneurs cheering you on. So there are 10 spots available. You can go to the dirtyalchemy.com slash ABI to learn more and apply or click the link in the show notes or in the description if you're watching this on YouTube for all that good stuff. So, (sighs) there are so many resources out there for business owners on how to grow. So focusing on sales, launches, growing your email list, growing your Instagram followers. It's all about growing the numbers, right? Growing those numbers. (laughs) And growth is important, of course, but it isn't the full picture. So if you can think of a massive oak tree with its branches stretching high into the sky, It looks like everything is happening above the surface. I mean, it's a ton of mass, like all that bark, all of those branches, all of those leaves. It's this massive thing. But with trees, (laughs) there is the exact same amount of mass that you see above the soil. That same amount is growing underground simultaneously as a root system. So as much mass is above ground, 
that exact same amount of mass is growing below ground. So likewise, trying to grow a tree in a pot that's too small for it will leave it stunted because the root system isn't big enough to support full growth. So if you want to grow your business, you need to make sure that you're putting as much energy into building a scalable foundation, building your root system as you are focusing on growth, that those branches, those leaves going out. And so the alchemical business intensive is about building this root system for your business so that you can grow your business into an enormous oak instead of a stunted bonsai. And of course, there is a ripple effect as seeds fall from the tree, you can grow an entire oak forest from one tree. And that is a power of impact you can have on the world through your business. So let us look at some examples of business owners who are from this year or a couple years ago, business owners who have stepped back and built systems and grown in the process, just so you, that you know that it is possible. So one of our clients has scaled to seven figures while being pregnant because she had hired a team, right? She started building a team and that allowed her to scale back and really focus on other aspects of her life to really fill herself up and get into this creative flow so that she could get to that point. So another example is client of ours who, because of COVID, COVID-19, the business owner, <laughs> unnamed business owner number two, <laughs> she had to homeschool her kids, okay? Like she had to step away, spend less time on her business. And actually through doing that, she could only focus on the things that she needed to be doing, okay? Suddenly, with less time in the schedule, less time in the day to work, she could she had to really focus on her zone of genius and the things that moved her business forward that only she could do, that she couldn't delegate. And this has actually been her most profitable year. They doubled in revenue this year. So going from a multiple six-figure business to a more than a million dollar business in revenue. Of course, this example is reliant on already having the systems in place and already having a team to support you and do the things that you're not supposed to be doing, doing the things that aren't in, in your zone of genius, doing those things better than what you're doing, right? So um, unnamed business owner number three. <laughs> so this last year, she was focusing on finding a man. Like she had started her business, it got to a comfortable revenue level for her. And this year, she decided to focus on dating and finding a husband, finding her man, finding her person. person. And that was a higher priority for her than her business. And because, again, she had started with getting a team in place, getting systems in place, a support system, she's still CEO role. She's still the creatrix and visionary in her business, but her business quadrupled this last year, even though she spent significantly less time within it. So this is a big shift from being in control out of fear to trusting that you are supported by your business, by your team and by life. So, I mean, I do really think that your best ideas and con <clears throat> Do you really think that your best ideas and concepts and your most powerful action or business compassion, your biggest compassion, comes from you being overworked or working all the time, putting in more time? Of course not. If you have a partner you live with, you know <laughs> that when you take care of yourself and fill yourself up, then you respond to his or her request way more gracefully than if you are fried or just tired. Them asking you to make them coffee when you're tired versus when you're well rested with lots of self-care and fun time in your schedule, you're going to give completely different responses. <laughs> you're going to say yes out of resentment and frustration or with that like a little tone in your voice. You're going to say no, fuck you, do it yourself or like 
on the other side of things like you could say no I like don't really feel like it or yes I would love to or like you know you show up so differently in your relationships depending on how well you care for yourself so this also works for our businesses and again as business owners this matters a lot as CEOs or stepping into their CEO role it matters a lot how we take care of ourselves how we spend our time but that is an aside. So there's a lot, lot, lot in the chemical business intensive. I'll let you check that all out at the website, but feel free to email me directly if you have any questions, sam at thedirtyalchemy.com or DM me at thedirtyalchemy on Instagram. I'm the one answering all the DMs. Um, and the full 13 week curriculum is on that page too, if you're curious. So <sighs> moving on a little bit. We have talked about this on the podcast before, what I'm about to talk about, <laughs> in episode eight on externalized energies. So if you go back to um, episode eight, you can hear a little bit more about what I'm about to dig into. But your business has it, it its own soul. It is a separate entity from you. The sooner you realize that, the sooner you can start building out the energy of your business so that it can begin to grow on its own without sucking all your energy away from you. In the beginning, when your business is first, your business is first birthed, its energy comes from your energy. You're investing all the time and energy and money to make it stable in this world, like our infant example before. <laughs> then if you've done it right, you get to a point where your business needs to separate from you so that it can start feeding energy back to you, paying you, covering its own costs so that you can make a profit above and beyond your own salary if you're taking one. Of course, <laughs> we should be working with our brains, our rituals, and our intentions to amplify our personal power, but our business, your business, is a separate entity from you. So you can design it, to act as a house for energy to build up on its own. It builds up its own assets, its own identity. That's what branding is. And soon enough, it has a power of its own, energy of its own that we can draw upon and we can have working for us. So you can imagine a series of concentric circles. So concentric meaning like a small circle with like bigger and bigger circles going out from it. The inner circle is you. And there are more and more circles of energy that you can add out from yourself to your business that is helping your business have more and more power. So systems are a huge part of externalized energy. This is tech, like automatic, uh, automated email responders, sales funnels, and just your straight up website. It's also your SOPs, your standard operating procedures. So these build you a foundation for your business so that you're not doing everything yourself. And in the alchemical business intensive, you'll create create the foundation in your business so that it can scale without suck, sucking all your energy from you. So you aren't doing everything yourself or spending your time managing your team. Instead, you will be free to perform at your highest level and give back with your highest calling. When you build a solid foundation for your business that is based off of proven strategies for growth and marketing, your business can scale easily, effortlessly, and because we're magical business owners, magically. <laughs> now I hope you can see how the two of these go together. You stepping into the role of visionary CEO while you're also building up your business's externalized energies. This inner work will allow you to let go of the reins, stop micromanaging your team, or build a team in the first place. You open up to receiving and being supported all while setting up the systems for your business to support you. So, as always, <laughs> thank you so much for spending this time with me today. If you feel called, we would love to have you in the Alchemical Business Intensive. As I mentioned, there's only 10 spots 
for this round. The application is open now. It's as simple as submitting your application on our website, thedirtyalchemy.com, and um, hopping on a call with me to see if it is a mutual fit. So I will see you next week for episode 33, our third very special episode. And you have a great, great, great day.